We talk about, uh, meanwhile, boatloads of fun. Maybe you want to put this one on your weekend to do list. It's day three of the 41st annual Palm Beach International Boat Show, and we got WPTV's Brianna Nesprell joining us live along the West Palm Beach waterfront where she's found a piece of history amongst all those super yachts. Chris, it's such a beautiful morning, so peaceful here by the water. I really can't complain about this assignment. I mean, I've seen tons and tons of boats, 800 of them actually, but there's one in particular very special. It's this one behind me. It's called Honey Fitz. It's launched in 1931 and it's been used by five U.S. presidents. The 1992-year-old Honey Fitz is a prestigious 93-foot wooden yacht that's been used by Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, Johnson, Nixon, and Kennedy. It's been fully restored by its current owner, you might recognize him, Charles Medica, and took about three years to completely restore. The restoration tied in elements from its original build in 1931, but mostly targeted the historic era as a presidential yacht during the Kennedy administration. Now, throughout the boat, you can really see parts dating back to 1931, World War II, and the presidential eras from 1945 to 1971. Had uh, Eisenhower on it, Truman on it to start with, and of course Kennedy and, and uh, Nixon and the, Johnson, and too. Johnson yeah. too, yes. Uh, it's, it's, she's a part of the country, part of our history. Was used in these waters extensively when John Kennedy was president over here at uh, Peanut Island as well as uh, at Palm Beach itself. So it's very fitting that after a three-year restoration that Joe and I oversaw, um, that boat is back here now, debuting at this show. Now the Honey Fitz is making its official debut here at the Palm Beach International Boat Show. So if you want to take a look at history, come on over. We'll, the boat will be here and we'll be here all weekend long. Chris. And you can get in on all the Palm Beach Pride of fun today at 12 to 6 p.m. at Bryant Park in downtown Lake Worth Beach. The Pride Parade kicks off tomorrow morning at 11 on Lake Avenue. There's a population of local teenagers in the LGBTQ plus community that are celebrating Pride for the first time this amid uncertain times. 16 year old Jasper Gamer is making signs to share impactful messages this weekend. As a trans minor, Florida Senate Bill 254 directly impacts a teen whose suffered or preferred pronouns are they, them. Jasper says the bill feels like a personal attack, especially for the youth and parents making tough decisions to improve health and overall quality of life. What a minor decides to do with their body in transition, especially as a trans individual, it should be their own business with their parents and it should be their own decision. Tomorrow's Pride Festival in Lake Worth Beach will be the first one for Jasper. They plan to continue being an advocate for the young LGBTQ plus community members. And both sides heating up as Florida wants to expand the ban on teaching young kids about sexual orientation and gender identity. Associates of the bill expansion say the discussion should be between parents and kids. Critics of the proposed expansion say it makes the LGBTQ community feel insignificant. WPTV's Tanya Rogers has more on this story. Taking sides when it comes to what our children should be learning and talking about in the classroom. The parents' rights and education law forbids talking about sexual orientation and gender identity kindergarten through third grade. Now advocates want to expand the age to the older kids. They were seeing that there was issues in the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders as well where they were, you know, changing their pronouns or they were going from one bathroom to another as, you know, what they identified and things like that. So the kids, you know, ages 10 to 13, they're very impressionable. What we're really concerned about is the chilling effect that this has on discussions about LGBTQ people. What if there is a child in that room that has two dads or two moms? Are they allowed to bring that up? Are they allowed to talk about that in school? Proposed changes also include school employees not allowed to call students by preferred pronouns that are different from those given when the child was born, kindergarten through 12th grade. You know, pronouns are confusing for children. You know, they, them, I mean, if we're using proper in English, if you say they are going to the store or, you know, things like that, that's more than one. So now when you're using, you know, he, she, um, them, they, all of these, you know, pronouns, it's not proper English, so it's actually confusing a lot of kids. If I tell you what my pronoun is, what is the problem with respecting that? What does it hurt you to not hurt me? 
and we see the state of Florida trying to legislate how people can be decent to each other with laws like this. Opponents feeling they're marginalized, advocates wanting parents to have more say in their children's lives. And taking that off of the teacher so the teacher doesn't have to explain that and it puts it in the parents, you know, hands so this way they know you know, where their child stands. This is what these bills are designed to do, cancel an entire group of people. And it's not appropriate, it's not right, especially because these groups of people are approached and they're just fighting for their basic human rights, the same rights that everybody else has. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida plans to march tomorrow against several new measures that Republican lawmakers in Florida are pushing. One of those bills proposed, it aims to limit which flags can be flown outside government buildings. That includes the pride flag and that has come uh, some in our community concern. The bill is passed. On Capitol Hill House Republicans passed legislation dubbed the Parents' Bill of Rights. It requires schools to publicize curriculum. That includes providing parents with a list of student reading materials. Plus, schools must offer parents two meetings with teachers each year. The goal is for parents to have more insight into learning and guard against what Republicans call, quote, work ed woke education. Every Democrat voted against the bill. It's now headed to the Senate. And we're still waiting to hear more after this week's indictment. Watch on former President Donald Trump in a social media post last weekend. He claimed he was going to get arrested this past Tuesday, urging supporters to protest. It comes as a New York grand jury investigates hush money payments made to an adult film actress for sexual encounters. Meanwhile, the former president who has started his 2024 presidential campaign will be in Waco, Texas today. The rally has many raising their eyebrows as it comes during the 30 year anniversary of the Waco siege, which left 86 people dead. 86 of those, including dozens of children. The visit to the Lone Star State is one of the first major public stops for his presidential campaign. Oscar winner Gwyneth Paltrow was the star witness in a courtroom drama yesterday. She and a retired doctor suing each other for a collision on a ski slope seven years ago. Reporter Caroline Shively has the story. Actress and business mogul Gwyneth Paltrow testified in a Utah court on Friday about a 2016 skiing accident. You were furious and said you skied directly into my effing back at the uh, top of your lungs. Yes, I did. Okay. I apologize for my bad language. 76 year old Terry Sanderson is suing the Oscar winner for an incident at Deer Valley Resort. He claims she was out of control on the slope and skied into him, leaving him with brain damage and broken ribs. Paltrow says it was Sanderson who caused the crash and is countersuing him for a dollar and attorney's fees. It seems like he's had a very difficult life but I did not cause the accident, so I cannot be at fault for anything that subsequently happened to him. A judge threw out Sanderson's earlier $3.1 million lawsuit. Now he is seeking $300,000. Sanderson's daughter testified the retired eye doctor has never been the same since the collision, describing a man who is often confused and angry, citing this exchange with her sister. She got right in her face and said a few, like screamed a few of you at her, which again, I, he doesn't talk like that and he doesn't raise his voice and scream. That was not the old Terry that I knew as a dad. We are back with a health alert for you this morning. Federal health officials continue to investigate an outbreak of infections linked to eye drops.